Welcome back everybody. Uh, we're in Suwaka Moon and we're doing some route planning. We finally got into Movia Map, which is exciting. We've been using Google Maps and we tried Maps Me for a little bit. Google Maps doesn't have all of the off-road routes that we wanted to do. And Maps Me was putting us in some pretty strange places like going through the middle of a winery. Yeah. So we decided to get a hard map, uh, which has been amazing. We got the Tracks for Africa map. They also have an app which you can sync up with your Garmin GPS if you have one. We don't have one, but uh, the map's been super helpful. And the app is great for looking stuff up. It's similar to iOverlander, but it's specific for Africa. So that's been really good. And it's offline. Yeah, you can download which, which offline. Can be very helpful. Exactly. When you're in the areas. So we thought we'd go over the first half of Namibia that we did up until Swak Up Moon so everyone can see our route. We left South Africa and came across the Woolstrip border right here, which was very easy. It's one of the main borders. Uh, and then we came up here to Grinnell, which was just a tar road, and then hit the off-road and came over to Fish River Canyon, which was very awesome. We stayed at a place called Canyon Roadhouse. We definitely recommend it. You go down into the canyon here. So we rode all through there, which was really nice. Um, and then we came off-road up here to Seaheim. Then we came over here to Oz, um, which was another cool campsite. What was it, Desert Horse? Yeah, I think it was Desert Horse. Um, mm -hmm. So we stayed there for a few nights and we did just a day ride to Luteritz. So we took this road all the way out to Luteritz, spent the day there, tried to go to went the to Shark Island. Yeah, went to Shark Island, tried to go to Coleman's Cop, the ghost town, but it was closed that day. Um, but we got to see the wild horses on the way back, which was very cool. And then from Oz, we came on this road up to Helmrenhausen. We just got um, some apple cake here, which was pretty famous and really good. And, and we then, slept on top of a shelter that elevates your camping to keep you protected from the wild animals. Yeah, that was right here at Beta. Beta. Okay, and then from the Beta campsite, we headed up to Sesrime right here, which is where we stayed. We camped at a gas station for three days, which was actually pretty nice. Um, and we headed into Sussesvlei, which is where the largest dunes in the world are. Um, that was a really cool trip. Um, and then from there we came on this road all the way up to Solitaire, which is all off-road as well. Yeah. All this is off-road. And Solitaire is just like a cool little town. There's literally just like a gas station and a campground, but it was a cool place to camp. Uh, we camped there with Cycle Sam, who's cycling his way back to the UK. Um, and then from here we came up over here. This is where we... We wanted were, to camp, yeah. but unfortunately we had no water, or not enough water, and uh, there was questionable no amount of fuel yeah, as well. Yeah, exactly. So then we ended up just going all the way to Walvis Bay. Right here is a really cool part, it's called the Moonlands, um, and it literally looks like you're riding over the moon, it's, it's pretty epic. Unfortunately, we didn't get a lot of that footage at all, so... Yeah, we were too worried about... Uh, we, were, of we were running out of water, running out of fuel, and we didn't think to film. We diverted a few times for some scenic uh, rides, and unfortunately, because of that, we even ran out of water sooner than we anticipated. So then, from Walvis Bay, it's just a hop up to Swalk Up Moon, which is where we are now. So at this point, uh, we're deciding whether we want to continue off road on this suggested route by uh, one of the guys that helped us with the carb, Martinez, um, Martinez. and uh, that would be an all off-road route to uh, pretty much up to the uh, border of Angola uh, and down the Caprivi Strip. Um, but we're also struggling with, uh, we don't have the main jet that would be ideal for, for carburetors, so the only place we could really have any chance of getting that would be in the capital city of Vindhoek. Um, unfortunately, there's no guarantee we could actually find this in Vindhoek. Uh, most likely we would have to still order it. Everything takes a long time to get in Africa. So I don't know, what do you yeah. think? What are we leaning towards? Going all the way to Vintuk is just like a tar road highway, which is not very fun for us, especially because yeah. we don't go fast. It wears out our tires and yeah. uh, the whole point is to go off road. Well, right here, we're in Swak Up Moon, uh, out on the coast. And we're going to head up the Skeleton Coast, which is infamous for shipwrecks and 
uh, whale skeletons. And there's not a ton of ships to see. There's really only like one hangar that you can get to off the road. So we're gonna go see that. Stop in Henny's Bay. And then we're gonna go up to Cape Cross. Uh, there's a seal colony here, which is supposed to be pretty epic, but being from the Northwest, we've seen a ton of seals. So we're not sure if we're gonna go in or not. Um, and then from Cape Cross, that's where we'll head inland back into the desert to go towards the Mesum Crater. Okay, we had to flip the map over, but we're going from the Mesum Crater, we're going to head towards Palm Wag. And then from Palm Wag, we're coming up to Sesfontaine, Fort Sesfontaine. Um, we'll probably camp there and then we'll just continue this road north. We're going to stop in Apuo. The Himbo people live near here. Um, they live like all around here in Coca Land. And then we'll head further north, coming up into Damara Land, which is where there's a lot of desert elephants. So hopefully we'll see them. Um, and then we'll just go all the way up to the Apupa Falls, which is supposedly a really cool waterfall um, that separates Angola and Namibia. That'll be our route all the way to the north. And then um, we're going to head into the Caprivi Strip from there. How excited are we about our new windshields? So excited. Oh my goodness. That should be good. Our friend Mario at Swakamund Yamaha. Yamaha called Dune Works gave us some um, super tenere windshields to put on. We zip tied them just to make sure they would work before we do anything permanent, but it seems like the zip tying might just work fine. Yeah. And meanwhile, Sal is putting on her green chili adventure saddle bag with the snake kit. Snake bag Looks kit. good. Snake bag kit. It's what actually the best. It's so easy too. At first it took us a long time putting them on, but now we can do it in like a couple minutes. And they're super solid. Yeah, we love it. It's awesome. Comes in great colors. And it's yes. easy to use. Yeah. And very minimalistic. I mean, you can put them on any single, any bike you have. Yeah, and we have the Hardcore Enduro. No, the Hardcore Soft Rack. So our, hardcore Soft Rack. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. And then a Mondo, Mondo strap kit and then the two snake bag kits for the side bags. And you can also get the full, um, like the full package and it comes with two 20 liter dry bags, which are awesome as well. One came down and was resting on my muffler for like four hours one day and it didn't burn a hole through it. <laughs> so they're pretty heavy duty. <laughs> Okay. 